once that happens, if the problem does develop, then this entire mass of solid fuel, which is not burned off, can explode? It, like can, it does not have to, but it can. I'm not, not every time you have an instability, it may lead to an explosion. And there are known solid boosters which have what we call slight instabilities in them, yet they are operational and there are no problems. But under some conditions, if there was some another defect, an instability can conceivably lead to such an explosion. What had you learned? Uh, what sort of problems was NASA encountering? That oscillation problem you uh, mentioned on the I, I am not sure. I've, I know that at least in the, I've heard that at least in the development stages of those boosters, they have experienced some instabilities. So th there have been problems which we had not necessarily heard about, and you well, also meant, go ahead. We have not heard about them, but NASA knows about them, and the other people know about them, and, they, and they've been working on them. It's not that we have had a problem and it was left unattended to. This problem has been worked on, and I'm sure that if they decided to attach this booster to the shuttle, then they felt that the problem has been taken care of. One more question. Uh, is a solid fuel or the, uh, the uh, hypergolic fuels, is one more safe than the other? You cannot say. It depends on the circumstances depends on the design of the rocket motor. You really cannot make a general One scenario statement. is possible. They could have encountered a problem aboard one of the, or both of the solid booster rockets, which could have ignited in some way the liquid booster container. Only after the explosion. You know, what? as long as the combustion is uh, contained within the casing of the solid booster. But we saw some tape right after the initial explosion there of at least one of the boosters still or possibly two, still going on their course. What would that well, indicate I, to you? I suspect that instability occurred in one of the boosters, not in both of them. And once it's exploded, then every, you know, there was so much fuel on board in the liquid rocket and in the other solid booster that they just joined. You know, maybe the first explosion could have triggered the others to explode. But I suspect that one of them had some defect in it, something happened, it may have gone unstable, exploded, and then the rest of the Challenger, you know, just exploded also. Professor uh, Zinn, thank you uh, for joining us today from Georgia Tech University. Thank you. And we continue our live coverage. Marianne? Thank you, Dave. Uh, as you know, at this point in time, the first participant in the Teacher in Space program, Sharon Kristen McCall, a 27-year-old social studies teacher from Concord High School in New Hampshire, was one of the crew members aboard this flight. And joining us now from Concord, New Hampshire, is one of her students, Mark Letalian. Thank you for being with us this uh, afternoon on what must be a very, very difficult day for you. Mark, can you explain to us exactly what it was like when you and the other students were watching what happened on television? Well, we were just shocked that it had happened. We, nobody even knew what was going on. I mean, we were just so surprised. I don't even think it hit everybody yet. What was the first uh, reaction from from you and your fellow students when you realized that indeed there was a disaster taking place and not a, uh, an exciting, uh, perfect mission and liftoff as we had first thought? Well, we were just, we just were really quiet. We didn't say anything, you know. We sat around for a couple of minutes and they told us to go back to our classrooms. But we were just stunned. Are you at home now, Mark? We understand that the students were sent home from school. Can you tell us something about your teacher, Kristen McAuliffe? Well, uh, she wasn't my teacher, but I knew her, and she, you know, she seemed pretty nice, and I feel, you know, bad about that that happened. Did you, I'm sorry, Mark, can you speak up? Well, she wasn't my, I didn't have her in any class, but I knew she was. She was, you know, a nice person. I think that it was good that she won the candidacy, but I can just say, you know, now that I feel bad for her husband and her kid. All right, thank you. Mark Italian of Concord High School. Uh, one of the students who knew one of the astronauts aboard uh, the Challenger today, Kristen McCullough of Concord High School in New Hampshire. Tom? For those of you who may be just joining us, tragedy strikes NASA. Seven astronauts, including the first teacher in space, Kristen McCullough, were apparently killed one minute after liftoff this morning from the Kennedy Space Center. Let's go back now to the shuttle Challenger on the launch pad. Launch pad 39B, the first time this had been used for 10 years. It was last used in the Apollo program, but NASA redesigned and refitted this launch pad to allow the shuttle to launch from here to give them two launch pads at the Kennedy Space Center. Just a few seconds, you'll see the shuttle's three main engines fire up and start. Everything appeared to look normal. 
one and liftoff liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower good roll program confirmed challenger now heading down range The shuttle has completed its roll procedure here. Engine's beginning throttling down now. The brown object you see in the center uh, is the, the external tank that contains the highly volatile fuel, two throttle solid down, rockets, which propel the shuttle to its orbit on both sides of that tank. Engines at 65%, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Because the shuttle goes through its most stress, they keep the engines down to 65 percent. The two solid rockets were not supposed to leave the side of the external tank and the external tank separation for another seven minutes after the disaster occurred. This is where they throttle up and the last words from the shuttle. It explodes in a huge fireball, one of the solid rockets veering to the right, another going to the left through the flame that's still burning there and the cloud you could not see anything left of the shuttle let's go we have a cutaway drawing here that I'd like to show you there are contingencies just in case the shuttle careens out of control NASA has two areas on the external tank that contain explosive charges this is an option on every launch that they have not saying that it was used this time but it exists that if the shuttle would careen over a populated area, the range officer at Cape Canaveral Air Force Base, just down the coast, carefully monitors the shuttle's ascent. And should a point of impact where the spacecraft should suddenly fall, at the fingertips is a switch that would send an encrypted signal to start the detonation. We're not saying that this did occur, but it is one of the contingencies that will be investigated, I'm sure, as they look into this tragedy that struck the NASA shuttle program. And we've lost seven of America's astronauts. Reed? Tom, Senator John Glenn, the first American in orbit, now a senator from the state of Ohio, is about to tell us his feelings from the Senate gallery. And uh, it finally has arrived. We hope we could push this day back forever. But. Uh, the people that were on the flight today carried our hopes and dreams along with them and they'll live forever in our memories and I guess that's the best tribute we can give to them the uh, our prayers our sympathy our condolences go out to their families and friends and uh, I guess that's about all we can say about them right at this time it's been an amazing success story up to this very tragic accident today. I think this was, what, the 56th or 57th manned mission, where we're dealing with new complexities and speeds and, and powers that man has never used before. And uh, we had hoped to push this day back forever, but that was not to be. And we all, I guess, intuitively knew that. So it's a day we don't want to repeat, that's for sure. Senator, what effect does this have on a space program or any sort of flight test program when something like this happens? Oh, it delays things, of course, because uh, there will be a very complete investigation. Our view of what happened uh, this morning would be only speculation at this point, although the very slow motion pictures I saw on one of the channels a little while ago uh, seemed to show the first light coming out of uh, one of the solid rocket cases. Uh, well, that'll turn out to be the cause of the difficulty or not, I don't know. But I wouldn't think that this was, uh, you know, what it'll do to the program or how much it'll be set back will be dependent on the investigation. Was NASA trying to push too hard on this? No, I don't think so. If there's one thing NASA has not done all the way through, uh, it is uh, take a chance on cutting corners. Uh, and we've grown accustomed to success. And it's been an amazingly successful program so far. 
You know, I remember one of the TV commentators, I won't say which network, but one morning talking about when there was a delay, commenting, when are we going to get this, this Turk, turn this turkey into an eagle? Uh, we'd become so accustomed to getting these things off on time that safety was obviously being, uh, at least in that commentator's mind, uh, was being given uh, short shrift. Why aren't we running these things like a regular airline schedule? Well, the fact that NASA has not done that. They've run it with the idea of safety first and foremost, and that's been the way it's been operated ever since the days when I was in that program many years ago. It's a tribute to them that they have not been goaded under pressure to taking any chances. And we'll just have to wait the, the accident analysis to see what happened in this case. Senator, were you watching the blast off this morning? I was not. I was in a classified briefing at the time, and uh, one of my uh, staff people uh, brought a note in to me about this, and then I left immediately and went up to my office. What was your reaction, particularly to the replays you've probably seen? Oh, my reaction was a profound sense of loss, I guess, that this day had finally come that we'd hoped would never arrive. In some ways, I guess it's, uh, you know, in, in our human existence, uh, let me be philosophical for a moment. I guess in our human existence, there is triumph and there is tragedy. And uh, man tries many things. And uh, we advance as a whole human race because we, because we succeed most of the time. We make advances, whether it's in space or engineering or health or medical things. Sometimes, though, we aren't perfect. And then there's a tragedy that uh, brings us back to our own human frailties and our, our lack of perfection. And so that's the kind of a day we're faced with now. It's been an amazingly succe successful series of triumphs through the years. But it also is fraught with the possibility of tragedy, and that's what we came up against today. When you say that this was a day that was pushed back for quarter of a century, was it inevitable that it would finally come? Well, I think, any, uh, I think everyone that's ever had any connection with the program has felt that uh, someday there would be a, a loss in flight. Uh, we're dealing with tremendous powers and speeds. You're traveling in orbit at five miles a second and trying to get back into the atmosphere from that kind of speed. And so uh, are we going to be perfect forever? I guess the answer was proven this morning that the answer to that is no. But uh, that doesn't mean that man doesn't keep trying in these areas and that we're not just as dedicated to seeing that this kind of research goes on. Senator, have you've, you? been, you've been part of a small and very select community of people the community of astronauts. What does this do to that community when something like this happens? Well, we've never had something like this happen before, except for the uh, pad fire, the, or the, uh, the fire on the pad that claimed three lives. Uh, Gus Grissom, Ned White, and Roger Chafee back in uh, 67, I believe it was. Uh, so we went through that uh, tragedy then, but that was not an in-flight accident. Uh, obviously, uh, there will be uh, uh, a shared sense of loss in the whole astronaut group and community, everybody associated with the whole program, whether astronauts or all those in the, in the supporting functions. Uh, but I'm sure their dedication is going to be to, to uh, find out what caused this and correct it and get on with the next flight. Do, do astronauts just simply accept this as part of the job? I think any time you go into flying or test flying, or uh, which many, uh, all of us were in in the prior to being in the astronaut program early on, uh, you accept risks, but you feel that the risks are worth it for the country and the importance of what you're doing. And you're willing to take those risks. And uh, that's the way we looked at it back then. That's the way I'm sure all of the current group of astronauts looks at it. How much more of a tragedy is this since it was the first launch of a citizen in space? A loss of human life doesn't have much to do with who's military and who's civilian. It's a tragedy for their friends and families, and I don't differentiate between the loss of life, whether it was the regular flight crew or whether it was a civilian on board with them. How, how much does it set back the Citizen in Space program, do you think? Uh, I don't know. I have no way of knowing at this point. They had lined up uh, some other people to go, of course. Whether this will affect that or not, I don't know. Do you think it should? This, does this raise questions for the SDI program? No, I don't think so, because the the uh, 
technologies that were being used here as far as thrust and the engines and whatever happened here, I think probably are not likely to affect the research going on for lasers and laser projection and, and uh, formable mirrors and, uh, and particle beam projection and things like that. I would not think, I would not think it likely that there was an, a connection there.